All right, so I got one more video I want to do for this Sunday, and it's an action-packed Sunday. We did fishing, we did our target shooting. Now I've got a couple of chores to do, and one of which is come out here to the pumpkin patch and pick the pumpkins um, off the plants that are dying here. So the, any of the plants that are withered up that you see here, we got to get these pumpkins off before they stop uh, start rotting on the vine. So we're gonna walk through here, and the ones that are still green and alive the plants that is we'll go ahead and leave them um, but the ones that have the leaves that are starting to wither up we're gonna pick those out of there and this pumpkin patch actually did really well I'm pleasantly surprised at how this did we've got quite a few pumpkins out here this year of all different sizes uh, most of which about the size of a basketball but uh, that's what we're gonna do today and we're gonna do this now and in just a minute you're gonna see some video I've got to go get some corn and put a, a feeder up um, again for that youth hunt I've got one feeder that I took down cleaned up charged the batteries and we're gonna put her back up so this plant right here the, the plants actually starting to, to, to wither and die so we're gonna take this pumpkin out of here and we're just gonna come up here and we're gonna cut this here and hopefully the bottom of him is not rotted and it's not so he's not in too bad a shape Kind of a goofy looking guy, but not a bad one. The little guy, the stem is starting to harden up. It's still green, but it's starting to harden up. Some of these leaves are starting to get withered on this plant, so we're gonna go ahead and take him too. Take that off. Cut him off right there. <laughs> the worm. Worm stuck to the back side of it. That's a nice pumpkin. It's a nice little pumpkin. We know. We don't want to grab it by this yet because it's still, it'll snap off. it's still a little bit green in there. All right, so before we take off, we got, how many have we got here, Mike? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven or eight? Looks like eight. Eight. Eight pumpkins. Some of them are fully orange. Some of them are not quite all the way orange. But I know there's, I counted out here again, there's probably between 20 and 25 decent ones out here that I think we'll probably be able to get next weekend probably half of them next weekend but the problem is from Halloween standpoint is it's only like the 16th of September right now so um, we might be a little early on our patch so we'll see what happens we got some other ones starting to to go in still uh, some of the plants are still green we've got some new ones out here so we'll see what happens so I got a local farm here that I stopped by and I get corn from they got five dollars a bag here and I got a stack of bags out here. Last year I tried to get corn right out of the field, but it's not dry enough. And if you leave it in the feeder for too long, um, you end up getting moldy and whatnot. So we're gonna get this, should be nice and dry, should work good. Okay, we're out here at Mike's Blind. We're gonna put some corn out here. You guys see me load the RTV up. This field right here actually has, if you can see, it's got beans and wheat actually in it. And that's a little fast for the camera, but this uh, this field's really been getting hammered by the deer. And uh, as you can see, there's quite a bit of field here. Good sized field. And uh, I'm gonna come around here real quick. And I want I wanna show you guys this setup right here and it's pretty unique I'm gonna walk away for a minute pretty unique the way that we put our feeders up 
because we like to hang these whirly bird feeders in the tree. And the best way to do that, that I found, my brother actually came up with this, is to use the winch on your ATV and we can hook this up and kind of unhook it from the tree and use the winch to lower it right down to the ground. The way that it's hanging in the tree is there's a chain from tree to tree up here. I'll show you that in a second. And uh, kind of just use this on a pulley system to, to hold it up there real slick. I'm going to get right down to the ground here. You see this stuff that looks like real small grass? This is actually wheat. I put that wheat and I threw it all the way up in here under where the feeder goes. And I've had it up here, I don't know, three, three weeks now. And it's growing up in here just like it's growing in the field. And you can see the deer just keeping it mowed right down. All right, so the way that I do this, again, I've got a pulley up in this tree above me. And this is your typical hanging feeder system. And I like to take a piece of uh, wood and put it in here as a spacer. And what that does is it keeps the chain away from here so that I can actually get the lid on when I want the lid on. Now I put this cover on here to keep the water out, but what I don't like about the design of this type of feeder is this top is a, just a barrel lid and it holds water. It actually, water will sit in here and it will run over the edge of this and you will get some moisture inside of this barrel. So this year we're going to try something a little different, let me show you. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to place a little something on top of here. This happens to be an empty Gatorade bottle. And I've taken two of our bags from the corn, and I'm going to actually put them over the top of this. I'm actually going to do two of them just so that it has a little bit more strength. And then I'm going to tape them down to the barrel in an effort keep the water from getting inside all right so our final product it might look a little bit ugly but what that plastic's going to do is going to keep the water from being able to get in the side of that barrel i think it's going to be much better than before all right now marcus is going to show us how this winch system works mark you got to turn the key on on the on the rtv so turn the key on and then go ahead and lift you guys will see in. just hit in yep does is it'll lift this right up right up to where we want it hold oh, oh, hold right there now i gotta put the batteries in all right we're gonna put these batteries in these are a rechargeable six volt battery that are made for this feeder we're gonna put them in not that any water would get in here but we'll put them in with the terminals down like this and basically you get positive and a negative on each one and a positive and a negative on this one the wires out of the way we already made sure this was free spinning so now I hope you guys can see on the camera this so we'll set our pounds of feed I see I just bought four bags that are probably 30 pounds a piece, so say 120. Timer number one will set to we'll set it we'll set it about two in the afternoon. That way there's nothing 
to be spooked out here. So 2 p.m., timer number one, 2 p.m., and we'll set it for about 12 seconds. So this thing will spin for 12 seconds. And we'll just set one timer for now. So we'll, timer number two will set to zero, three to zero, four to zero, five to zero, six to zero. Now this says 41 days. Uh, this feeder has six different time settings you can put on. You put the, the pounds of food in and it estimates. I've never actually found that to be correct ever, but it's supposed to be able to do that. But what I like to do is I like to go back through here and I'll do a test. So you press and hold on the 12 seconds and it'll count down and it should actually spin for us. So, and we should have a feeder ready to go. So now we're just going to put our feeder back together and that should automatically feed in the early afternoon and without spooking anything. Now we'll raise this thing up the rest of the way and we'll be on our way. Okay, Marcus is going to reel us in and we're going to hook this thing up. Go ahead, buddy. In. Out. Good, good, good. Now we unhook this. This just hangs here. And we'll draw this in in a minute, but this hook right here will hold our feeder right where we want it to be. And it's probably, I guess I should get down here so you can see me. It's probably about, I don't know, eight or 10 feet off the ground and there's no legs that stick down on the ground. So it's pretty uh, non-invasive as far as being down here and the deer don't seem to mind it at all. So. I think we're ready to go. Maybe we'll take a quick peek inside the blind before we head back up to the house, but uh, thanks for watching the video and we'll see you next time. Yeah, look at all these deer tracks right here. Mark and I are gonna go take a peek at the blind and look at all the deer tracks, my goodness. So we are actually gonna come back out here in a minute. We'll run this stuff back up to the house and we'll come back out here. You guys can see right here on the bottom of the blind is a camera looks out across here so we'll come back in a minute and we'll change that SD card out and maybe I'll put a couple of those pictures uh, maybe if we got something good on there I'll put them on this video but right now let's go up to our blind make sure everything looks good so to make sure there's no bees in here anywhere so I'll open our blind up I'll we'll check the door real quick make sure there's no bees floating around anywhere that aren't going to like us. Wow, Dad, it actually, it actually stayed, stayed regular, unlike the other here. ones where it, it gets all... Basically, it has here's the view from the blind. The front windows, we just prop these windows out. And Marcus and I are going to do our best to video his hunt. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> 